words cannot describe how excited I am to play with this new makeup. As you guys know, I had an eye infection, so I was out for almost two weeks from being able to wear makeup. So I pulled aside some of my favorite PR items that I received that I was super duper eager to play with. What do we have? I have the e.l.f. Luminous Putty Bronzers, the Too Faced Italian Spritz Palette, this Milk Makeup Setting Spray looked really interesting. I have a ton of e.l.f. actually from a PR package that they sent me. So I'm just, I'm so stinking excited. I don't have new in every single category because my untried makeup slash PR pile, I'm moving in a few days. So I don't have everything easily available to me. But this is the stuff I pulled out because I was really, really excited. So let's start off with our prep products. Lottie London launched these Sweet Lips Lip mask. There's a few different things. So I have two overnight lip masks and then I also have this lip scrub balm. I'm interested to see if these lip masks are at all similar to the Laneige. I love the Laneige. I always buy them during the Sephora sales. So I think I'm going to start off with the lip scrub balm. And this is in like the flavor mango sorbet. But all of these have really sweet flavors. <laughs> I decluttered, well not decluttered, I put a couple other flavors in a giveaway bin because I don't need all of them. But let's start off with the lip scrub. I love little products like these. It has a sweet scent but nothing crazy. Okay. Oh yeah, it's not the most like granulated. That was probably the most incorrect word ever. But there's not a lot of granules in here to really exfoliate. You can kind of see them. Um, but it does feel quite hydrating. I think the e.l.f. lip exfoliator and like the lipstick bullet is a little better. But okay. Let's try the lip balm. Oh, I forgot to put my my little apron <laughs> over me. If you don't know me, I am the clumsiest person alive. I cannot be trusted without coverage <laughs> over my outfit when I'm doing my makeup. Okay, let's try now one of the overnight lip balms to see how they compare to the Laneige. I'm going to use Just Juicy, which is in the pink. See, the thing with Lottie London, love them because they are so affordable, but I would say 90% of their products I think are not great. <laughs> they just don't work out for me. So this is a lot harder than the Laneige. It's not super creamy when you apply it. Mmm, the scent is so nice though. It's thicker. It definitely is thicker and it's harder. But I think it's gonna stay on the lips better than the Laneige, which kind of slides all over my face. Which I don't mind, obviously. I keep buying the Laneige. Super duper hydrating though. So I would say not an exact dupe of the Laneige because the feeling, the consistency is different. But... I like it. I think it feels really nice. I'm happy about this. It feels nice and thick. Like it's gonna stay on my lips the whole time that I'm doing my makeup and really hydrate. So I actually like this. I think this is nice from Lottie London. This is a good pickup. And then also to prep, I have this from Youth to the People, which is a great skincare brand. This is the Peptides Energy Eye Concentrate. I believe this is a new product from them. Which by the way, almost all of the products that I'm using in today's video were given to me in PR, in case you didn't know, but I'm very unbiased with my reviews that I do of PR. If it's crap, it's crap, you know? Okay, so it comes out like this. Okay, I think we got it. It's coming. There we go. <laughs> I'm just gonna put a little bit on the under eyes. Ooh, it feels really nice. Ooh, it feels awakening. Ooh, I like the way that that feels. So this is supposed to brighten, smooth, and depuff. So we'll let that sit in. I like the way that that feels, okay? You to the People does a great job with skincare, so that's really, really nice. Okay, now for primer, I'm gonna try this new product from e.l.f. It's newish, it launched a couple months ago. This is the Power Grip Primer, but it has niacinamide in it. Let's try it, it's new, I want to. I'm undecided on how I feel with these grippy primers. I don't know if they really help <laughs> in terms of longevity. I go by your word in that a lot of you said this grippy primer situation has been a game changer for you. And like the placebo effect has happened to me 
where I feel like it does make my makeup last longer because it says it's supposed to, but then I really question it. <laughs> I'm like, does does it really? But anyways, I've used the Power Grip Primer from e.l.f. before. I like it. I, I just don't know if it really does make my makeup last longer, but it definitely gives a nice tack to the skin. I wanted something really tacky because I am using all cream products today. For the most part, very, very little powder. So I want the cream to stay. That's very important. And I also wanted to make sure with the cream that I used a more matte foundation. So this is the YSL All Hours Foundation. I've used this on camera before, but since I haven't been able to wear makeup, I haven't been able to use this for my speed reviews. So I need to do some more wear tests out of this before I can put it in a speed review. So today we're gonna use it again because I haven't used it much since I last featured it in that video, so I need to. So, what I didn't like about this before is it looked drying on my skin, I thought. And some of you guys were like, you need to give it another chance, Morgan. It's like an all-time favorite foundation of mine. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm using my Beauty Blender. No, I think this is the Refer Sponge. I'm really not sure. But I'm using my sponge. And I'm going to blend this out. See, right now it looks really light, lightweight, honestly. I used a new shade, MN1, since the last time I used this. And this shade is a lot better match for me. Ooh, that's nice. Okay, so the reason I only did half of my face is because e.l.f. sent over their Camo Color Corrector Collection. Oh, geez. And I actually, I already purchased the peach one, and I regretted not purchasing the other shades because I have some fun ideas for these. So I really enjoy the consistency of the peach one, so I think I really like this product. So I'm excited to have these other colors because these are going to be great for changing the undertones of foundation or concealer, not just color correcting. Like if your foundation is way too warm, mix in some of the blue. If the foundation's too cool, you can mix in some of the orange or even some of the yellow. This will also help with coverage over blue if you mix it in like with a concealer. So I've been really excited to test this. Now this foundation, it's a pretty good color match for me, but I want to add in a little bit of blue to see if anything changes. Uh, yeah. Let's do that. <laughs> so I'm going to take some of this. I'm going to put it right beside the foundation. We don't need too much. A little will go a long way. And let's mix it. And so what this blue is going to do is it's going to cool down the foundation so it won't be so warm on my skin. And like I said, this is a pretty good color. I'm not going to color correct this really any other time. But look at that. It gave it almost more of like a, if it's unblended, like it looks a little bit more gray. But you can totally see the difference. Okay, so I'm really excited about that. And like I said, I've been using the peach version of the corrector on my under eyes and it's such a lightweight consistency it doesn't mess at all with the concealer that you put over top and yeah this instantly neutralized the foundation a little bit more so you can see it's a little bit of a better match to my neck isn't that so cool so this foundation is looking a lot less dry than it looked the first time. So it was definitely my primer. I mean, don't get me wrong. It still doesn't look hydrating by any means, but it looks a lot thinner. It looks a lot happier on my skin. And then these e.l.f. color correctors, so cool. They are going to be so useful. I definitely recommend picking these up if you struggle with the correct undertone. And then going into concealer, I'm going to use the peach color corrector. I've used this before, but let's play around with the yellow too. So I'm going to do the peach on this eye, and then we'll use the yellow on the other eye and see what we prefer. The yellow is going to be really nice for brightening, I think. And I'm just going to... Push this into the blue of the eye. The peach is perfect, by the way, for blue, which is what I have. So I'm most likely going to prefer the light peach. But it's so lightweight. It barely adds any coverage, but it really does help neutralize my blue. 
Let's see how the yellow does. So this one I feel like is just a little bit more brightening. It doesn't do as good of a job of reducing the blue, but ooh, that added a pretty brightness. Oh, I love these. These are such a cool product. Didn't have a new concealer, so I'm gonna use the Espresso ABC concealer. I really liked this the first few times I've used it, so I wanna continue testing this and make sure I still really like it. Yeah, I feel like this concealer it's so thin, it looks so lightweight and healthy on the under eyes. This espresso brand has really impressed me with their products. Like, look how good my under eyes look. I feel like the yellow corrector definitely brightened the under eye more, which is what I needed for this specific concealer because it's not as brightening of a shade. And then I've just been using the Say setting powder, so I'm going to quickly set my under eyes. Nothing new. I'm not applying a lot because today's look is going to be mostly cream oriented, but I like a little bit like right here in the T-zone area. Okay, cool. That should be enough. So I got the Too Faced Italian Spritz palette in the mail, and I probably would not have purchased this if it weren't sent to me in PR, but so many of you guys expressed interest in this and wanted me to review it, and you were like, Morgan, the formula is made in Italy, which Too Faced doesn't do a lot, so I don't know if it's only because it's the Italian Spritz palette, or hopefully from this point forward, they will formulate their products in there. If it's good, we'll see. We'll see. But you guys were telling me that I needed to try this. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to do like a random look. I will definitely have to play with this more before I can give you my final thoughts. But you guys got me excited for this. So I'm going to start off with the shade Gelato right here, which is a beautiful cream shade. And I am just placing this on the brow to give it a little bit of lift. Like, do you see the difference? It looks so much better with a nice matte cream shade right under here. And then I want to start off with Holy Cannoli, which is kind of like a pinky peach shade. And I'm going to put this on the inner half of the crease. I have no game plan right now. Pretty much any shade that looks pretty to me, I'm popping it on the eyelids. So that's really pretty, and it has more vibrancy. Then I thought, okay, go off, I like that. And then let's hit up When in Rome, which is a little bit more of like a deeper pink. And I'm gonna, oh, okay, yeah. We're gonna disperse that between both eyes. Normally I do one eye before filming, but I'm out of practice. This was on accident. <laughs> and we're just going for it that I'm doing both eyes at the same time. So if the look turns out ugly, this is why I had no game plan. Okay, okay, so far, so good. Then I'm gonna take a Isam S33 and I'm going into Spaghetti About It. <laughs> That's a funny name. And I'm gonna just fill this area right here. I do plan on putting a darker shade here, but this is just to play with more colors, to be honest. Mm, this palette smells good. It's not too strong or overwhelming of a scent, but it does have a nice, sweet, citrusy scent to it. Okay, and I'm going to use the same brush, and we're going to go into Mamma Mia. And I'm going to start off by placing it along the lower lash line in the outer corner of the eye. And then I'm going to kind of blend it out and up. This shape of eyeshadow is just more flattering for my eye shape. And the look that I kind of want to go for, but you don't need to shape the eye exactly like this. It doesn't have as much like pigment as I wanted, but it's okay. Then I'm going to go in with a bigger brush and I want to blend out the edges. Because I will say like these are not hard to use, but this is a little stuck. <laughs> so it's not blending out completely seamless with this first experience. And because I just have a lot of experience when it comes to makeup, I can fix it, but it it looks a little patchy to me. I, I don't know. I'm also not using the brushes that I typically use because I'm washing them, but I'm gonna try and fix those. 
and make it look better. Okay, next up, I'm going to take Lake Como. And this one felt a little, like, messy to me. I wanted to see how these shadows adhered to the eyelid. This one looks so pretty. Ooh, okay. This brush is from Sydney Grace, by the way. Okay, it's a little sheer. I felt like maybe it probably would benefit from having like a matte shade underneath, but it's building up fine. Or use your brush wet with this shade, but it's really pretty and soft. It's kind of like Cinderella y. And when I do reviews, I don't wet my brush because I just really want to see the shadow in its true form. But yeah, I'd probably wet my brush if I were using this over a bare lid. <laughs> then I'm going to use the same brush and I'm going into Lake and Bake. Now this is a much different formula than this shade. So this shade is kind of like more slick and light, whereas this one is more creamy and thick. So I'm interested to see. I feel like this one definitely needs a finger. Yeah, It's just not picking up on the brush as well. And I'm focusing it on the center of the eyelid and then meshing it into the outer corner color, which I'll probably go back in the outer corner color and add more to make it more of a blended, smooth transition. Hmm, I'm not loving this look. In my head, it looked a little different. <laughs> this is why I normally do the eye look on one eye first. But we'll make it work. I can immediately tell I need to reapply some of Lake Como because it came off a little patchy right there for some strange reason. And then definitely taking Mamma Mia, which is the outer corner color, and building that up to make it look more deep and blended. That dark shade was a bad decision. Guys, look, it just it looks a little patchy. I'm trying to figure out the situation. For the lower lash line, I'm going into When in Rome, which is that bright pink color. And I'm not going to put it all the way in towards the inner corner, but you can see it's going halfway in. And then going back into Mamma Mia. Mamma Mia. Here we go again. Okay, going back into Lake Como. Okay, I feel like that looks a lot better now. I I don't know you guys. I want to say it's a better formula, but I definitely need to play more. From what I'm feeling out a lot of times with these Too Faced palettes, the shimmers are really weak and not worth it. These feel a lot better than some of the older palettes, but I didn't have the easiest time with this palette. So definitely make sure you're subscribed because I will be letting you know my final thoughts as I use more shades on my eyes. But it's not taking my breath away, you know? My shadow looked a little patchy there before I fixed it. So I'm just taking a little bit of leftover concealer because I overblended a little bit so it looks messy. So I'm just going to blend that. All right, continuing on before I finish like liner and lashes, I have these from e.l.f. They launched the Luminous Putty Bronzer. And the reason I was curious about these is because I did not like the Luminous Putty Blushes. So I want to see how these compare to the Tower 28 ones that have the shimmer in it and if I like it. And the shades they sent me very interesting. Look, this is the deepest, darkest one. How cool is that? It almost looks a little like plum-like. But for me, I'm going to use the shade Sun Chaser. I think this one's going to be the best shade for me. And you can see it's luminous. So I'm just using a Morphe M536. That looked a little muddy right there. Okay, what do we think? Honestly, I think it looks a little more flattering than the Tower 28 with Shimmer because it's less noticeable, but it definitely has that luminous look. I do need to build it up more than the Tower 28 because the Tower 28 is a little bit creamier in consistency. This one's a little bit harder, but... It's not peeling anything underneath. I might have even benefited from using a little bit of a lighter shade. Okay, I, I will have to use it more again just to see like when I go outside how it looks. 
but I feel like the luminosity is really pretty. It doesn't get patchy like I feel like the luminous putty blush. I like it. I think that's nice. And then I'm going to try the vacay mode, which is the lighter shade. I want to contour down my nose to see because this one is more gray. Oh my gosh, this is going to be so good for my pale friends. Or fair, that's the nicer word. Like, do you see how subtle that is on my nose? Probably would want it a little darker normally, but I wanted to try that. Definitely not my preferred shade for that technique, but a little something. And then lastly, I got this from Bobbi Brown in the mail. This is the Pot Rouge for lips and cheeks. I'm really excited that Bobbi Brown sent me this. I don't know, I, I feel like it might be good. Look how cute the packaging is. The only thing with this shade is it looks kind of light, but let's see. And I want to try it on my lips as well. Ooh, it has like a really creamy feel to it. Ooh, that applies pretty nicely to the cheek. This particular shade is nice and subtle. It's not gooey, it's not sticky, which I like. It doesn't feel like lip gloss. It's a really great consistency for a cream blush. I like it. It's almost like a really creamy lipstick kind of feel, which I think just meshes into the skin and foundation so beautifully because I hate, for example, it's funny that I'm comparing Bobbi Brown to Jones Road Beauty, but Jones Road Beauty, I feel like their cream blushes are so different of a consistency from a normal foundation that they just don't mesh as well together. Whereas this one, this particular consistency really blends in to the foundation seamlessly. Ooh, that's nice. And you can put it on the lips as well. Definitely would need a lip liner though, but because it has that lipsticky feel, it's doable on the lips, but I guess not my first choice. But I love this as a cream blush. I think it's so pretty, subtle. I've never used this product from Bobbi Brown. Oh, that's really beautiful. Before I put eyeliner and whatnot on, I really wanted to test this from Milk Makeup because their marketing photos show very shiny skin that immediately gets matte looking. It's not for my skin type, but I need to know. So this is the Milk Makeup Pore Eclipse Matte Setting Spray. It says to shake well, so we're gonna do that. I wanna see if this mattifies the face for my oily skin girl. So I'm just gonna use this palette here and we're gonna compare the sides. So I'm gonna leave this side. Let's see. Let me get a feel for the mist first, okay. It says to set for one minute. And let's see if this side will look more matte than the other side. Cause I feel like it could be really cool if you have oily skin, if you're using all cream products, or if you just want your makeup to last longer, hopefully this does that. And while that's happening, I'm gonna take a little bit of this Hard Candy Eye Def Eyeshadow Marker, and I'm just using the black shade to smudge into my lash line. Uh, they sent over a bunch of different shades that looked really beautiful. So I really wanna try these. I don't think today's gonna be the day, but I saw Emily Noel talking about these. So I will keep you updated on those when I do try them, but I'm gonna use the black one to see what we can do as far as eyeliner. The packaging feels really high quality. I'm not gonna do anything crazy like I said. I just wanna smudge it into the lash line. Ooh, very creamy. Smudged out pretty easily, but it didn't hold the pigment. Make sure you push it into the lash line as well. I'm gonna do this a second time over here. And then, I mean, I know this is not eyeliner, but I'm just gonna attempt to extend my eyes out a little bit. I mean, I can't tell you exactly how amazing or not amazing this product is, but I just really wanted to put this on my eyes. Okay, what do we think? I think it needs a little bit more time to set down, actually. So while that dries then, I guess we'll do some mascara. I have this new one from e.l.f., which I've heard good things about. This is the Lash and Roll. I think it's supposed to be a dupe for the benefit, but let's try it. e.l.f. is really playing with these brands and <laughs> straight up copying them, aren't they? Curl my non-existent lashes. If you're new here, I don't have much to give in terms of the lash department. And they're also shrinking because I haven't used my lash serum in a few weeks because of my eye infection. That would be a bad idea. 
And this is my first time using this. So I normally don't like mascaras on the first use. But that looks kind of good. Wait a second. Now I know I curled my lashes, but it is holding the lift pretty well for my lashes. Ooh. Oh my gosh, I think I like you. Wait guys, I think I really like this mascara. More so for my upper lashes than my lower lashes. This isn't doing the best work on my lower lashes, but my upper lashes look really nice. It's holding the lift. I think I like this, but I'll have to continue using it. Now in terms of the setting spray, I feel like the side that I applied the setting spray looks more glowy. So <laughs> that didn't do what the photo said, but it's a really nice mist. I'm just gonna do the other eye or the other face. The other side of the face, you know what I'm saying. So I don't know if that did anything, but it wasn't like what I saw in the photographs. Let me pop them some falsies and we'll finish off with the lips. Now lippies, ooh, so many new lippy products have launched. So for lip liner, Iconic London launched these sculpting lip liners. So they're made to be natural, but for you to be able to re-sculpt and reshape your lips. So I have two colors that I'm in between. We'll go with the lighter shade, Seriously Cute. So you have like a smudger brush on the end if you want. I haven't seen a smudger that was a sponge in a while. It's been a long time since I've had a product like that. Ugh. Yes, wooden applicator, love it. Hey, this is really close to my natural lip color. Just a little bit more orange, warm. It's pretty creamy for it being like a wooden pencil. I actually really like the consistency of this. Ooh, there's not much drag. Yeah, I really like the way that this feels. Okay, Iconic London. Made a mess, nothing new. Iconic London did also launch these Melting Touch lip balms that go with the lip liners, but I have something a little bit more exciting. The e.l.f. O Satin Lipsticks. They sent me the whole stinking range and I'm so excited. I need like a light pink. I'm thinking let's try feeling myself. These have a very high quality feel to the packaging. It's like a soft matte magnetic closure. Like, okay, e.l.f. I mean, these aren't the cheapest lipstick option, but look at that. Slight, faint vanilla scent. Good pigment. Not a super hydrating feel, but ooh, I like that. And I have so many more colors to test. The range looks really beautiful. Like I'm also looking at, no doubt, look at this nude shade. This is gonna be a stunning nude shade with a brown lip liner. Okay, I'm a fan of these. I think these are really nice from the drugstore. I am definitely gonna play with a few more. Let's darken the pink a little bit because this is a little bit more peachy than I want. So I'm going into Effortless now and we're gonna blend this on top. Yeah, that did what I wanted it to do. It's, you can see it doesn't fill in the lines of the lips, but it does a good job going over them. Mm, I really like that option. And then lastly, the last item for today's video, I thought that these looked super cute from Catrice. These are the Lip Jam Hydrating Lip Glosses. I put a few of these in my giveaway box, so I don't have all of the shades, but let's try Strawber. What is it? Strawber Baby. Strawber Baby. Yeah. <laughs> these just sound really, really cute. Does it have color to it? Yeah. It looks like it's going to be pretty sheer, which is what I want. I just feel so old school whenever I apply lip glosses like these. Ew, look at that. Now this is definitely not gonna go down as <laughs> an all-time favorite lip gloss, but it's not sticky. It has a thicker feel to it though. It doesn't have really hardly any color. It did slightly smell like strawberries. This is kind of fun. I like it. It's definitely more cutesy, like jam, sheer color, fruity scent, but it added some gloss. So I'm happy about that. So here is the final look. Honestly, it turned out pretty good. I'm not mad about it. Jose's really gonna love editing this because I talked so much, but let's talk some more final thoughts. I really like the Lottie London lip masks, not dupes for Laneige, but still really good. 
also thought the use of the people peptides energy I concentrate was really really nice hydrating great in the morning I mean, I don't think this e.l.f. Niacinamide Power Grip Primer is really any different. I like that it's pink, but um, yeah, it makes the face tacky, gives a grip if you like that. And I definitely am much more happy with the YSL All Hours Foundation today, especially since I paired it with mostly cream products. It looks really light and thin on the skin, it doesn't look drying, and it should last a long time. I think the product of today's video were these e.l.f. Color Correctors. So fun. A lot of versatility you can get with these. And then, not new, but really liking this espresso concealer so far. Not in love with the Say powder because it kind of darkened, but it did blur. I'm not sure. I'm not sold on the Too Faced Italian Spritz palette. It does feel like a better formula, but you saw I did get a little patchy with it today. I'm going to continue testing it, and I'll let you guys know because it might have just been an off day today. So... Keep your eyes peeled. The Luminous Putty Bronzers from e.l.f. So far, so good. I think it's better than the Tower 28. It's less shimmery, glittery. And it applied really nice. Wasn't patchy. Also, I think this is in second place of my favorite product from Bobbi Brown. The Pot Rouge. What a beautiful cream blush. And I'm also pretty impressed with the e.l.f. Mascara. I want to use it some more because mascaras can change as they are more exposed to air. I don't know about this Milk Makeup Setting Spray. It didn't do what was advertised, but it might end up helping with wear a lot. So we'll keep you updated on a speed reviews. I like the Iconic London Lip Liner, so I'll have to play with the other colors that they sent me, but it's the perfect consistency for me. The e.l.f. lipsticks I also really like. I think this is a great launch from e.l.f. I like this formula better than their cheap little plastic ones and the packaging is super high quality. And then these Catrice lip jams. Super duper cute. Not an all-time amazing formula but very very fun. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video just getting ready with me playing with some new launches that I was excited about seeing what our hit and miss is. Um, make sure you're subscribed to my channel because all of these eventually will end up in a speed reviews video where I can give you my final update on these as I continue to use them more and test them with other products. So make sure you guys subscribe to see that, like this video, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one. Here we go again.